Got you that time. Got you that time. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome back to Cambo Trout Fishing. For today's video, I'm gonna give you, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six tips that I consider really important to being able to catch naked effectively in heavy cover, heavy grass specifically. So your heavy grass, your heavy pads, these are tips that I'm gonna give you that have served me really well with all the fish that I've caught. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list these tips really quickly, and then I'll go into them in depth with, with exactly what I mean. First, approach stealthily. Pick the right lures. Target the points, cuts, and voids in the grass. I'll give you tips on how I like to present my lures. Always make sure that when you get that strike that they actually have the lure. And make sure you have the gear that you need to be able to haul big fish out of heavy grass. So, with that quick list put up there, let's get into what I mean with each one of these bullet points. Approach stealthily. By and large, snakehead are a wary fish. There's been many times that if I haven't approached an area stealthily, as soon as I make a movement, even if the fish is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet off, you just see them boil and explode and shoot off. And that's a terrible feeling because then you have to wait for them to reset and hopefully they come back. So approach stealthily. That's tip number one. Tip number two, choose the right lures. When I'm working in heavy grass and pads, I really like to use a top water hollow body lure because I want something that floats. And there's other lures that float like whopper ploppers and things like that. When you're fishing in heavy cover, you also want your lure to be weedless. You don't want to get hung up in the weeds. So I tend to opt for topwater frogs and mice. I'm very partial to my acor frog. That served me really well in the past. It caught me a lot of big fish. But the bottom line is you want a floating lure because with a floating lure, you can keep it in the strike zone. That can be really important to drawing those more finicky strikes. If you can't keep it in the strike zone and up on top, if it sinks, if it goes down into the grass, there's a chance that the fish might not hit. A much larger chance in my experience. So, topwater hollow bodies, frogs, mice, choose your own variety or brand out there. I'm partial to the acor. Now, for what you're actually targeting when you're looking at the grass and the pads, you're looking for points, cuts, and voids. Now, some of this is self-explanatory if you've been in the fishing game for a while, but I'll show you some images here. When I refer to points, I'm talking about areas like this, okay? Where I'm denoting them with the arrows. Fish like to sit on points, because it's an ambush point. When bait fish or another animal comes by, they can sit there, they can pounce. Same kind of thing goes with the cuts in the grass. With the cuts in the grass, they'll also sit in there and again, wait for that bait to come by and ambush. And the last one is the voids. And by void, I mean holes in the grass. You may have a giant grass mat, one of the most productive areas in that grass mat is gonna be holes in it. So once you get your lure to the edge of that grass mat, work it slowly into the void and get ready for the explosion. Now, the way I like to present my lures, if you're in an area, like there, put it this way, there are some days when snakehead will hit moving lures, even if they're moving quickly. Those days do exist, but they're the exception. So some fish might hit the fast presentation but with snakehead, especially northern snakehead, it seems to be that working it slower tends to produce better results. So, slow your presentation down. Sometimes I'll literally, like when I cast, let it sit. I'll let it sit on that initial cast till the rings settle. That can be up to 20 seconds. So you're talking a significant amount of time. And a lot of times at that first twitch, that's when they hit. Maybe that 20 seconds gives them time to zero in on where it landed and they're just sitting there staring at it, waiting for it to move. You do that little tiny twitch and they just annihilate it. But I'll do that, I'll twitch, twitch, move it maybe a couple inches. If it's a slow day, maybe at most a foot, at the very most a foot, on a faster day and I'll let it sit for another 10 or 15 seconds. It served me really well. If you haven't seen my topwater snakehead videos, check those out. You'll see the presentation I'm talking about. Now, once you get that strike, don't be so amped up that you set the hook without making sure they have it. You're gonna have a bad day if you do that. No, 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 no. So one thing you can do, aside from just watching your lure closely to make sure they actually got it, if you think they have it, slowly raise your rod tip up and see if the fish is there, see if you see the frog move on the surface. Did he get it? Nope, he missed it. Idiot. 
when you raise that rod tip up, if they don't have it, you're gonna see that frog or mouse move and you're like, oh, okay, he doesn't have it. I'll keep it in the strike zone and wait for him to come back and grab it. Oh, he missed it. I'm letting it sit. Come on, turn around and come get it. Turn around and come get it. That's it. That's it. Make sure they have it. Only then set the hook. But when you do set the hook, set it with power. Snakehead have really hard mouths. You don't want to miss fish because you're not putting enough into that hook set. But this gets to our last tip here. When you're setting the hook that hard, you have to have the gear to back it up. So you're talking about at minimum, a medium heavy rod, minimum. And heavy cover, I honestly suggest probably a heavy. And in terms of line, well, heavy fast action is what I usually use. In terms of line, for the longest time, like literally since I started snakehead fishing, I've really gotten away with 20 pound braid. But I think a big part of that has been that when you're in a kayak, when you set the hook, because you're sitting in water, the kayak will actually move towards the fish slightly because, you know, heavy objects in water just move a lot more easily. <laughs> but the bottom line is that because the kayak moves towards the fish on the hook set, it takes some of the tension off the line, it takes some of the pressure off the line and the knot. When you're fishing from shore, there's no give because your body's not moving. So all the pressure is getting loaded onto that line and the knot and the lure. So as a result, this next season, I'm upgrading to either 30 or 40 pound braid. I know a lot of guys who use 50 pound braid. Now, if you're looking for a challenge out there and you want to fish ultralight, I get it. I, I, I understand that, you know, to each his own. But if I'm fishing heavy cover and a 10, 15, or maybe, maybe this year, 20 pound snakehead smashes my frog, I want to have the confidence that I can wrestle that fish out of the grass so that something like this doesn't happen. Here you are! Oh, oh she goes! No! No! That was a beast, man. That was a beast. Yes, that, that's, that, that was a painful line break, and it's not the only one I've had when fishing in heavy cover, especially from shore or from a stationary position where I can't take some of that load off of the line and the gear. So for my specific setup, I'm fishing a Katie Lynn custom rod. This is, I believe, a six and a half, probably closer to heavy, to be quite honest. It's got a lot of backbone to it. The rod has served me really well. I have that pair with a Penfierce 3 4000 series reel. <laughs> I get a lot of crap from my buddies a lot because you can see what kind of reel that is. I'm like, why are you using a spinning reel frog fishing? That's, that's a conversation that I've answered on the live cast before. But in short, the practical reasons are that with a spinning reel, generally speaking, you can take up line a lot more quickly. And sometimes when you set the hook on the snakehead, they will jump right at you and swim right at you. And if you can't take up that line quickly enough to keep tension, you can lose them. With that said, I have a lot of buddies who do great on snakehead with bait casters. And I think I might try it this year. So, you know, stay tuned for that development. But bottom line, I like a heavy rod, fast action. I would say at least 30 pound braid can go up to probably 50 and have a heavy duty reel that can take up line pretty quickly. All right, so those are the tips. Hopefully they serve you well this spring, this summer, this fall, as we come closer and closer to snakehead season really heating back up. But now that I've given you the tips, I'll actually show you just the raw footage of the several days that I haven't shown you yet from this past really late summer and mid to late fall that I was snakehead fishing with my buddy Rashawn. We got into some monsters, man. Like I, if you've been with the channel for a while, you've seen some of those monsters. I've caught them up to just over 14 pounds with Rashawn and I've broken wolf ones that I think are probably bigger. But anyway, these are some ones that I haven't shown you yet. So I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And let's get to the action. Oh, how did you miss that? You clown. That was a big one too. He's still there. Yes! 
you that time. Got you that time. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Oh yeah, that's a giant. There you are. Come here. Gotcha. Yeah, thanks, dude. Ugh. Whew, I've been stalking. I've been stalking that big girl for a minute. <laughs> you keep them all, they'll end up in. Oh yeah, 100%, dude. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. Yes, yes, yes. Here you are. Oh, she goes. That was a beast, man. That was a beast. Got you that time. Yep. It ain't the big one, but I got him. Keep him up out of that grass. There you are. Gotcha. <laughs> There she is. You little beauty, you. All right, back to the action. Oh, there's one. We're out the point. GoPro, start recording. Right about there. Oh. Gotcha. No, little guy, though. <laughs> Hey, you rascal. Hey, ain't that little. Got you on the grips. There she is. Little beauty. All right. To the next one. <laughs>